It's emissions-free, powerful and renewable, and it could play a vital role in a sustainable energy future. First developed in Persia and China, people have been using windmills to pump water and crush grain for thousands of years. And today, technology allows us to harness the wind to create electricity. Wind is everywhere, which means it's an energy source for all. Sure, there have been some questions about its cost, its efficiency and its reliability, but with some companies looking to build wind farms without government subsidies, what do they know that we don't? There's so much to learn about wind. For example, did you know that wind itself is created by the sun? Wind arises because of the uneven heating of the Earth's atmosphere, its irregularities and its rotation. And despite its unpredictable nature, it's estimated that wind has the potential, technically, to provide more than twice the world's energy demand. And it's not just about lots of power. It can work on different scales too. Turbines come in all different shapes and sizes and today's wind farms can be built both on and offshore. With that kind of reach, it's no wonder that we visit three different continents to find out more. Ahead in the programme, we visit Kenya to find out how wind power could transform Africa's energy landscape. We meet a Danish transmission operator who's building a pan-European offshore grid network to balance a renewables heavy grid. We go transatlantic to uncover how California's largest utility is balancing wind power with energy storage. And finally, while most turbines are getting bigger and bigger, we meet a Spanish turbine developer with plans to turn the market on its head. As always, we'll have an expert on hand to guide us through the topic. Emma Pinchbeck from Renewable UK will be joining us to answer some of the harder questions. But first, let's take a look at some of the fundamentals about generating electricity from the wind. Wind power can save 2,000 litres of water per megawatt hour compared to any other energy source. One megawatt of wind energy can offset around 2,600 tonnes of carbon dioxide. From 2000 to 2015, cumulative wind capacity around the world increased from 17,000 megawatts to more than 430,000 megawatts. Industry experts predict that if this pace of growth continues, by 2050, one third of the world's electricity needs could be fulfilled by wind. You might think energy access for all requires an expensive centralised grid, but in Kenya, Lake Takana wind power shows how remote wind generation can help plug the access gap and connect a nation. Kenya's largest wind farm will provide sustainable power to two million of the country's homes and help support the government's goal of universal electricity access by 2020. There are many special things about the Lake Turkana wind power project. Uh, it, one is it is the largest wind farm in Africa. It has 365 turbines. We are hoping to soon see the transmission line completed so that Kenya will be able to benefit from this uh, cheap source of power. The line will connect the Great Rift Valley region to the rest of Kenya where only 55% of homes have grid access to electricity. It's also resulted in new infrastructure, with 200 kilometers of new road, fiber optic cable, and local electrification. Power is generated from the wind turning blades that in turn turn a turbine, and the turbine then turns the generator, and the generator produces the power. And the big advantage of wind power is that there is no fuel consumption. The wind force at Lake Turkana is amongst the most powerful on the planet. Taking advantage of it will reduce Kenya's dependence on fuel imports. We get a constant wind that allows us to have a yield on our installed capacity, which is called load factor, of about 62%. If you compare this wind park here in Kenya with other wind parks, onshore wind parks in Europe, United States, you will find that the average of the wind speeds in those parts of the world is only about 27, 28%. That makes us very cost effective and very sustainable. 
increasing sustainable power generation is a government goal, but the project has also implemented programmes to improve local access to other resources. We have deployed in just under three years about 1.8 million euros worth of projects to assist the communities locally. The discovery of high quality wind sites across the country will play a major role in expanding Kenya's generation capacity. Wind power matters to Kenya because Kenya has an incredible resource in wind. Kenya could rely on having up to 10 to 12,000 megawatts of wind in the future. Lake Takano wind power shows us a new model for growth, bypassing the need for conventional network developments. It has put Kenya on the map of the renewable energy from wind perspective. It will increase investment in Kenya. There's a lot of interest. There are many wind farms that are in preparation and in development right now. So I think Lake Tucano Wind Power has opened a new source of investment for Kenya, for foreign investment as well as local investment, and it's a great opportunity. Kenya is already the world leader in terms of solar power systems installed per capita. This new wind capacity is accelerating its progress even further towards a sustainable energy future. Emma Pinchbeck is Executive Director of Renewable UK. She was previously Head of Climate Change and Energy at WWF UK. She worked on the Paris Agreement, the international treaty to address climate change. And prior to that, she worked in consultancy across the energy and financial sectors, as well as at the Sustainable Energy Association. And we've just had a look at Lake Turkana in Kenya. You were involved in that project, weren't you? Yeah, I was. So in my previous job at WWF, we worked all over the world. And one of the most exciting places in the world for renewable energy is Africa, including that project. Uh, now, obviously, we've looked at some quite remote places that wind energy can be used. Can you tell us a little bit more about the different markets where it can be used, though? Yeah, so it's growing all over the world at the moment and the biggest markets are perhaps where you'd expect, so in the UK and in Northern Europe, but also in the US and in China and increasingly in places like Chile and Brazil. In terms of sustainability, people talk about wind energy being sustainable, but why? So wind energy doesn't require a fuel source, so once we're built we don't need to mine for anything and we don't need to burn fossil fuels, which as we know are contributing to climate change. So it's sustainable as a form of energy production. Um, but then it's also fairly sustainable as a form of infrastructure because of how we build it. So uh, the amount of energy that goes into building a wind farm is paid off after one year of generation from that wind farm. And then it's a pretty sustainable uh, financial model as well. These uh, technologies run for 25 years. So once they're built and up and running, you don't require any additional fuel. So the costs are quite low. But what other kind of arguments are there against wind energy? So, like a lot of modern technologies, they're disruptive in that they generate energy in a different way from traditional thermal plant where you're burning a fuel source where you want it and it sort of generates as a, uh, imagine a flat line. Yeah. The way wind and solar generate is a bit like this, a bit, um, it's called intermittent or variable. We generate more when we've got more wind or when we've got more sun. And that has been talked about as problematic if you're plugging these technologies into grids which are used to managing technology that goes like this. So that has been an argument against producing volumes of, of, of wind or solar on systems, but that's changing too. So the advent of storage technology, smart systems, things like big data and artificial intelligence are all helping us integrate more modern energy technologies onto old fashioned grids. Well, as you can see, there are a lot of common misconceptions about wind energy, but there's one myth which can easily be dispelled. You thought you knew, think again. Myth. Wind turbines are really noisy. Fact, early wind turbines were fairly loud, but new designs are quieter. Noise from turbines is a common complaint by opponents of wind power, but modern turbines have thinner blade designs and aerodynamic blade tips to minimize noise. Most wind farms are sited a thousand meters from the nearest home. Measurements show that at a distance of 300 meters, noise from an average turbine will hit 43 decibels. Most refrigerators have a background hum that hits 40 decibels, suggesting turbine noise will be lost amongst background noise. Offshore wind is really taking off, but expanding farms is pointless if national grids can't absorb the power. 
In Denmark, one operator has a vision of bringing wind farms and nations together through a pan-European network. The North Sea experiences enough wind to power the whole of Europe, but getting that energy to land is an issue. EnergyNet is constructing a future where wind power can be transported and even traded as required. EnergyNet is a transmission system operator in Denmark. That means we own and operate a high voltage grid. Large scale wind means that sometimes we have more than wind we can use in a country. And then we will start to export it to neighboring countries. The International Energy Agency estimates that 30% of Europe's power demand by 2030 will be met by wind, up from around 10% today. That will make balancing the grid and developing infrastructure to trade excess power increasingly important. EnergyNet are constructing a network of interconnectors, huge cables that enable power to flow back and forth between countries. Interconnectors is critically important for electricity grid. It is the highway of the grid. It connects regions, countries with each other, meaning that we can trade energy over borders. If the wind blows too hard, we either shut off the turbines or trade the excess. But what if there's not enough wind? According to EnergyNet, interconnectors might be the answer. When we have too much energy, we just export. And when we need energy, we reverse the flow. So, so the countries are able, with good interconnectors, to back each other up. Without interconnectors, each country needs to have reserves within the borders. Now, with interconnectors, we can share reserves in a bigger geographical area. While Denmark already has energy links to Norway, Germany and Sweden, and is building them to the UK and Netherlands, EnergyNet has an incredible vision for the future. The North Sea Wind Power Hub is the creation of an artificial island where you add on hundreds of thousands of uh, wind turbines supplying up to 70 to 100 million Europeans with green energy out in the middle of the North Sea. The genius about the artificial island is that you could set up a lot of uh, wind turbines offshore out of sight but still you use nearshore technologies which are cheaper and this will lower the price of the green transition. Uh, and then you should also imagine the artificial island uh, and the interconnectors as a spider web, making it possible to send the energy to different countries and not only to one country. And then you can always send your energy where it's needed and where you can get the better prices. Economies of scale drive prices down and a hub in the North Sea could provide a power conduit and support for thousands more wind farms. This is why we call uh, the North Sea Wind Power Hub the energy sector's Apollo moon landing. It's a very ambitious project. The goal for the hub is, of course, to make sure that we're able to supply uh, the Europeans with green energy in the future. It's an ambitious goal and one that will need a lot of support from partners, but a North Sea Wind Hub has the potential to revolutionise the economics of offshore wind in the region. Thinking about the scale of power generation with wind, how much electricity currently is generated by wind? So at the moment worldwide we've got about 500 gigawatts and by 2021 we're looking to get to over 800, which tells you about the scale of the sector and how quickly we're ramping up. In developed markets like the UK, we're doing anything between 10 and 25% of the energy mix. And I don't think people know just how big we are already. And you mentioned the energy mix. So thinking about the sustainable energy mix in the context of decarbonisation and the roadmap to 2050. Mm. Tell us about that. So we need to decarbonise lots of different areas of the economy to get to 2050. And that includes everything from agriculture to aviation emissions to how we use energy and so renewable energy forms particularly wind are going to be incredibly helpful to us getting there there's no one single solution but about 65 percent of our emissions today come from the energy sector so a renewable energy technology can help solve that problem if it's going to become more and more important how can we make the wind generation industry more competitive so it's not a mystery, this. It's like any form of uh, new energy infrastructure. We need three things. We need a long-term, stable government and policy framework so you can plan ahead and you can see what's coming down the road. That helps bring investment forward, which is the second thing you need. You need a supportive market, supportive finance um, and procurement regime. And the last and most important thing in wind, which is such a new technology, is technology development. So we're anticipating, for example, still building bigger turbines. 
What advances have been made when trying to deal with the unpredictability of wind? So firstly, I'd say wind isn't unpredictable. It's just different to what we're used to when it comes to managing the electricity grid. We're producing electricity about 80% of the time with most of our turbines, and the new ones are so sensitive, they'll tip over in a, in a breeze. So the idea that we need a lot of wind to generate is a bit of a myth. However, we are innovating all the time to make that even better. And when you've got a technology that depends on the weather, you really want the best data that you can get. Thanks, Emma. Lots more from Emma coming up later in the show. Join us after the break. We'll find out how storage can transform wind power and how smaller can be better for community power. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.